So we provide housing and housing options for survivors of domestic violence here in Washington, D.C., and that could be um, a range of things from housing counseling to um, ho homelessness prevention to helping victims access safe shelter, transitional housing, and other kinds of affordable housing. We manage only affordable housing, and that's a very challenging environment. And I also have come to understand that issues like domestic violence, issues like abuse, substance abuse, literacy, health issues, education issues actually cover a spectrum. My most significant example of domestic violence was the murder of one of my long-term managers by her husband who then committed suicide. It was for us, we we're already working with Dash a lot, but it was I think a way to, not a wake-up call as much as it was, to highlight the fact that if you look at communities in this region, there's actually a spectrum of problems. I don't view the Dash clients as those women. They're just women like a lot of other of my, of my residents, of my staff. So the, the, the practical reason for this partnership is that the things that Peg learns about this population can benefit my residents, benefit my staff, benefit my company. And right now, it's partly just re raising everybody's awareness. I have three kids, and I had a youngest daughter. Her name was Antoinette, and she was murdered. The gentleman, she met him when she was 14, and they later became friends off of Facebook. The gentleman deceived her and manipulated her. He, he um, sent threats to her as well as me. It seemed like my world came crumbling down. I came to Daesh. I had never lived by myself. I had never been by myself. And if I didn't have this place to give me another start in life, I don't know where I'd be and what I would do. When I stuck the key in the door, I wasn't prepared for what I saw. <laughs> I was like, what is this mines for now? I saw the, the, the floors and the, the, the floors, and I saw how beautiful the place looked and the immaculateness of it. And I was like, wow. You mean, um, is, you know, hold up, wait a minute. Is this real? And I, this is where I'm to be? I said, like, God, I wasn't expecting that, but Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. So this is the beginning of an end. And I know that there's greater things out there for me. We help families uh, find apartment units throughout the city that they can lease up in their own names. And for a lot of the women, this is the first time that they've had the opportunity to do that. And so they've made their, um, their properties available to our families, sometimes um, at a risk to them for families who may have criminal histories, who may have poor credit, who may you know, be getting out of particularly violent situations. And ENG has really taken a risk to make sure that these families have some place to go. And that relationship with ENG has really helped us to be able to develop relationships with other landlords and property managers throughout the city so that we have a wide variety of um, housing options to give our survivors. I guess the, the biggest lesson is that uh, when you're looking out, you can also look in. Because many of the problems that we face as a culture are all around us. So there's, there's very little in the way that we approach our philanthropy, for, for want of a better word. It's not about them and us, it's about helping collectively to lift up our communities, of which we're, we're a part.